at 5.21pm on September 11th, 2001, this steel-framed high-rise collapsed at freefall. It dropped like a rock, due to normal office fires, according to the government's final report. World Trade Center 7 collapsed because of fires fueled by office furnishings. It did not collapse from explosives or from fuel oil fires. For the third time today, it's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed, destroyed by well-placed dynamite to knock it down. I turned in time to see uh, what looked like uh, a skyscraper implosion. It looked like it had been done by a demolition crew. The whole thing just collapsing down on itself. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. This sound, it sounded like a clap of thunder. It looked like there was um, a shockwave uh, ripping through the building and the windows all uh, busted out. About a second later, the bottom floor caved out. The building followed after that. For a large building, 100 meters side to side, to fall with a level roof line at free fall, straight down through its own structure, the entire building's structural integrity must have been removed simultaneously and instantaneously. Even a small amount of resistance would have been measurable as reduced downward acceleration. Any lack of symmetry in the resistance would have caused the building to tumble instead of coming straight down through its own structure. Any breaking, bending, crushing or pulverizing of the building's components would create resistance and in turn prevent all the gravitational potential energy of the building from being converted completely into kinetic energy and therefore in turn inhibit the free fall. This is high school physics. A building cannot do free fall with 40,000 tons of structural steel in its structural system. This is rather incredible. You cannot have a building falling at free fall, which means not one of those columns gave any resistance. The building we are discussing is of course the Solomon Brothers building in downtown Manhattan, also known as World Trade Center 7 or just Building 7. Constructed in 1987, it was a modern steel framed high rise. It was a 47 story class A fully fire protected structure with reinforced concrete floors built around 82 solid steel structural columns rooted into the Manhattan bedrock. 58 perimeter and 24 core columns, it stood an impressive 610 feet tall. As a highly fire protected structure, it had 3 hour fire resistance ratings for all the columns and 2 hour fire resistance ratings for the floor assemblies. Here, for contrast, you can see a construction worker walking next to one of the huge columns. The design was so robust that prospective tenants were offered the option of removing entire floors to create high bays, which was done higher up in the building. But we really couldn't see a lot of damage from uh, this angle, from the north side of the uh, structures. Um, that's why everybody was so surprised when all of a sudden it just, it just fell. This building's destruction was investigated by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. The simple observation of freefall should have been the starting point for their investigation. They recognised the huge implications of what freefall indicated. Freefall time, a freefall time would be an object that has no uh, structural components below it. But they refused to acknowledge it in their investigation until they were backed into a corner by a high school physics teacher named David Chandler. A student took a video of me dropping a soccer ball from a ladder. I imported the video into Tracker, then marked the position of the ball in each frame. Tracker captures the position and time data from which it can compute velocity and acceleration and graph anything versus anything else, basically. This is the, a graph of velocity versus time for that soccer ball as it's dropped. And notice that the slope, that this basically is a linear graph when you take velocity versus time when there's a constant acceleration. So as note here, the slope is nearly constant at about 9.8 meters per second squared. Notice how in the end it deviates from a straight line because as the speed builds up, the, uh, the drag increases. And so you're actually getting a little bit of a noticeable effect due to air resistance, even just from a ball dropping a few meters like that, okay? So air resistance, as subtle a force as it is, is detectable. This is a graph for the roof line of WTC7. Note that for well over two seconds, the graph is linear. So the acceleration, similar to the soccer ball, the acceleration is constant. 
the slope of the linear portion of the graph is essentially equal to the acceleration of gravity within the margin of error of the measurements. In other words, for this building, even though it is falling straight down through its own supporting structure, free fall actually happened. Notice also that there's a sharp onset of free fall. If the building is holding steady, then it simply lets go. In the approximately two and a half seconds of free fall, it falls over 100 feet, the equivalent of about eight stories. Free fall is motion under the influence of gravity alone. All resistance must be removed. Some people argue that the resistance in the case of WTC7 was not significant because the falling mass was so great. It's true the falling mass was great, but the strength of the supporting structure was even greater. The structure was built to support three to five times the actual load. When it does eventually engage the structure, the rate of acceleration slows and actually decelerates. Amazingly, someone at NIST added a nice straight red regression line through their stage two data. They even gave the equation of the line. It shows that the slope is exactly equal to the acceleration of gravity. So that red line is a flat out absolute admission of they're even closer to the acceleration of gravity than my measurement. They are right smack on the money. They're on that number for this accepted as acceleration of gravity in feet units, okay, 32. The red line on this graph means that NIST acknowledges WT7 came down without resistance and without doing any work for over 100 feet. It means all support for eight stories was suddenly removed by something other than the falling mass.